I have always been different throughout my life. My biological parents who were both 23, decided to put me up for adoption as they couldn't get married at that time. I was born on February 24, 1955 at a shelter facility ran by a doctor for unwed women. First, it was decided to give me, to the family of a lawyer but they declined to accept a boy. But a middle-class couple, who were high school dropouts requested a child as they didn't had children for nine years. At first, my biological mother declined to give me, as she didn't wanted her son to be a high school dropout like that couple. But she decided to give me on one condition they must save money for my college education in future. She even made them sign a pledge. So that's how I started to live in another family as their adopted child. I actually lived in San Francisco, close to the Silicon Valley. Those were the days of electronic revolution. My father was a great mechanic. Though he was a high school dropout, he knew everything mechanical. He used to serve in Coast Guard as a mechanic during the World War II. After the war, he started buying old cars, repairing and selling them. My mother worked as a bookkeeper. Though we didn't had much money, they always loved me and I still love them more than anything. Actually I consider them as my real parents. From my early life, I knew I was adopted. I didn't care it at all. But when I was a very little boy, a girl told me that I was adopted because my real parents didn't wanted me. It was one of the times I cried the most. I ran home but my parents looked me in the eye and told me that they chose me and selected me as I was special. The words, special, and chosen, had always been in my head from those days. My childhood was quite same as anyone else in the Silicon Valley. My father taught me many things mechanical about cars. But I wasn't interested in mechanics because you know, I hated getting my hands dirty. What attracted me the most was the electronic components in the cars. I used to get those things and play with those. The school was actually boring for me. I didn't like to sit and hear what others said. So to kill the boredom, I started making pranks and troubles. One day, I created a poster and sticked it to the school notice board which said, bring your pets to school. The next day, every kid in the school bought their pets into school creating an apocalypse. My teachers were fed up with me. I was sealed as a troublemaker. But my parents weren't. They always loved me. They treated me like a kid who had special powers. They also knew that I was very intelligent and creative. One day when I was in fourth grade, a new teacher came to class. We called her Teddy. She got to know that I was a big troublemaker. So one day she gave me a workbook full of math problems and told me that if I complete the problems, I will get a lollipop and five dollars. I went home and started doing them all with great effort. I completed it the next day and got my prize. But eventually I declined to accept bribes from her as I wanted to please her by doing those. If she hadn't come to my life, then I could have gone to jail. Soon the school had tests and I scored the highest because of my teacher. The school officials told my parents that I could skip two grades but my parents decided to skip me one. Then I started my sixth grade. But my current school didn't had sixth grade. I joined another school but classmates who were older than me started to bully me. They mocked me as well. I became alone and socially awkward. So I decided to transfer to another school. Seeing my interests in electronics, a neighbor named Larry who was also an engineer, got me into a club named Hewlett Packard Explorers Club. It consisted of some tech enthusiastic students. We discussed many things and also some engineers from Hewlett Packard used to give us a talk. One day, we went to Hewlett Packard lab from this club. It was an amazing place especially for me. But what caught my eyes was, a computer. That was when I saw a computer for the first time. It was named 9100A that machine was gigantic. During that time, I didn't even imagine that I will later change the computer industry. I was in love with that machine. During my high school days, my pranks became another level involving electronic devices. Once I connected my entire house with a network of speakers and microphones so I could hear everything happening inside. But my father became so angry and told me to dismantle it. 
To create new devices, I even have called the CEO of HP demanding some parts. He was surprised and gave me the parts, he even talked to me for few minutes. But my life's course was changed when I met a longtime friend of mine. He had the same first name as mine. He was actually five years older than me. I met him at an electronic class at school. He was a school legend with his electronic wizardry. We had so much in common that we started to discuss and work on some projects. Although he was older, he was very quiet and intelligent than me. We even started doing pranks with electronic devices. One of the pranks involved an electronic device made by him. If anyone pressed that device, the TV signals would go out. But we started a serious project later. One day he heard about a device in a computer club. It was called the Blue Box. The Blue Box was a device which could hack into telephone network and call someone for free. We made one, it was mostly made by my friend actually. We called a random number and said to that person loud that we are calling you for free with excitement. It was actually a great experience and reward for us. My friend decided to leak the way of how it was made to others, but I had some other plans. I told him that we could sell it. It costed us $40 to make and I decided to sell it for $150. It sold well. Actually we sold about a hundred blue boxes. We had a problem while selling, when a man pointed me a gun and asked me to give him one for free. Both me and my friend were terrified and we decided to stop selling as it was illegal. But my selling experience made me thoughtful. I seriously started thinking about starting my own company. After high school, I went to Reed College. It was actually expensive for my parents. During my college times, I became interested in Zen Buddhism. I seriously started following Eastern spirituality. It was also the period of counterculture. I started extreme diets with my bunch of friends. My diet only consisted of fruits and vegetables. I thought that I will be clean both mentally and physically by these diets. I even started to avoid showering and keeping myself clean because of these thoughts. I had no interest in attending classes of subjects that I wasn't interested. Also I didn't wanted my parents to give away so much money for me. Due to these reasons, I decided to quit college. So I became a dropout, but college dropout like my parents. After quitting college, I started to look for a job and got one in Atari. I got the job as a technician and a wage of $5 per hour. Soon, I was so attracted to Eastern spirituality that I went to India. My purpose of journey was to find spiritual enlightenment. I went to the Himalayas and spent seven months in India. Those days taught me many things which I would never learn from any college. After my Indian life, I came back to the United States with a shaved hair, Indian robes and sandals. I continued my job but me and my friend wanted to do something different. He got job as an engineer in HP, but he had many side projects. When he started creating a device with a software and keyboard that could be connected to a monitor, I was over the moon. I started to ask him questions like could you make more? It was the perfect opportunity to make the dreams come true and to do something different. Me and my friend began to discuss about building a company. I was so serious about this that I sold my car and he sold his valuable calculator. We also borrowed some money from our parents. Many people around us thought that we were mad. We started working day and night in my garage. I talked with a shopkeeper and he agreed to buy our product. We sold some devices we made to him with a great profit margin. But I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to build something more great and full. I wanted a device that everyone can use. We weren't actually a company. Even we didn't had a name. Soon we came up with a name. I didn't wanted an incomplete product anymore as well. What I needed was a computer which was complete. We started building a design which was simple and innovative. I also made another friend Ron Wayne our partner. The company which was born in our garage was split into three. I and my friend had 45% and Ron had 10%. But Ron soon exited the company as he was scared of bankruptcy when I started to borrow money from people. 
If he had kept his stake, that 10% would have worth $54 billion in 2012. Anyway I started to look for investors because we needed a huge amount of money. We weren't getting any investors as both of us didn't seem to be serious about our plan to the people I met. Everyone thought that we were highly ambitious and immature. But due to my hard work and meetings, we got an investor who was rich. His name was Mike Markula. Mike had previous experiences in doing business. He invested $250,000 in our company. He also dealt with all our business plans as he had experience running companies. He became the chairman of our company. Soon we released our next product. It was launched at West Coast Computer Fair in April, 1977. The product received a huge appreciation as about 2,500 were sold in 1977 and 210,000 sold in 1981. Our company was becoming very popular as well as me. We became a real company with some employees and a new office. Everything started to click. I started to create new ideas with my employees. When our company went public, I became a millionaire. I was worth $256 million because of my vision and my friend's work. I became one of the richest person in the world. But everything wasn't so good. I started working on some other projects. I also didn't want it to become the CEO as I knew I was inexperienced. So me and our chairman started to look for a good CEO. Our search ended in John Scully who was the CEO of a soft drink company. I invited him to join our venture. I and my team were working on a completely new product that would change the course of personal computer industry. But due to my anger and strictness, things started to turn over. I always had this temper and the strictness of a great product. I always wanted things to happen in my way. But these happened as I was actually inexperienced at those times. Soon, I was being avoided. Due to John's opinion, we had to hike the prices of products. I thought he loved everything about computers, but I was wrong. I appointed a person as our CEO who didn't admire our products. He was always into business and economics rather than products. Our products were selling well but I was sick of this attitude towards me from my own people. When I was 30 years of age, I got no post in the company. I was again avoided. I wanted to create more products, but I didn't got my deserved place. So I started to think about stepping down from my own empire. Soon I quit my own company built by me. I also became interested in another company. It was actually a computer graphics company. During that time, CGI was not popular as today. Some individuals from there, who were my friends wanted me to invest in that company so, they could work more independently. Then, I bought 75% of that company and we renamed it. I began another computer company as well. But my previous computer company I built, was starting to fall. It didn't had any other great products as it used to have. They didn't had any choice but to bring me back. I joined them, as their new CEO after some years. I felt like actually been back home after a long break. We started working on very ambitious projects and hiring some new individuals. Soon, we released more computers which were different like my vision. But I didn't want it to stop there. I noticed that people wanted something simple and elegant. Soon, I revolutionized music players. But the entire mobile phone industry was changed when our company built a smartphone. During those times mobile phones weren't that smart. So we decided to make a smartphone. It was actually a teamwork. I guess it was the first smartphone, which was released on June 29, 2007. That device was created with a lot of hard work and a lot of people working behind it. It was a great product too. It had many features of today's smartphones and it was a hit. My intentions didn't stop there. My other graphics company started working on small animations. Under John Lasseter, our company created a 3D animation video which soon led to an animated film. That company soon transformed into an animation studio. Our films are still released and is leading the animation film industry. My company is still following a huge legacy. I wanted to build a long-lasting company. It is now one of the largest worth company in the world. 
So let me tell you who I am. My name is Stephen Paul Jobs and I have been known as Steve Jobs. I and my friend, Steve Wozniak, created a company called Apple which still created quality products. I was once abandoned by my biological parents but I got the greatest parents in the world by that. I have been once abandoned by my own company, but that taught me many things and I changed the whole company when I came back. I also had invested in Pixar Studios which was later acquired by Disney. Pixar released the first computer-generated animated film called Toy Story and is still leading the industry. My parents are Paul Jobs and Clara Jobs. I have been a troublemaker throughout my entire life. But my wild ideas which were insane to many, led me to become one of the greatest innovators. I never liked to compromise on my ideas. Our company was known for Apple II and Macintosh. But we revolutionized technology, with iPod, the iPhone and the iPad. Throughout my life, I wanted to make devices that are simple and elegant. My whole life was actually kind of messy. But I have always enjoyed my life. So whoever you are, keep doing what you love and be always you. You can achieve anything. Only the ones who are crazy to think that they can change the world are the, the ones who do so.